Good morning. Welcome to Harmony of the Gospels. So this is a, a lesson in the Gospels again today. Um, we're going to get back into the three duties of a Christian and don't be a hypocrite. Um, and this is part two of that subject because I never finished uh, the Lord's Prayer last week or even got into fasting. So it looks like I'm going to do fasting uh, the next lesson that I do. All right. So so let's say a uh, make sure it's good to go here. Sound is good, and we're good for recording. All right, so let's uh, say a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to get started. We're going to be in Matthew chapter six, verses nine uh, through fifteen, and then Luke chapter eleven, verses one through four. Okay, so two accounts of the Lord's prayer. All right, so say a quick word of prayer, and then we'll get started. We're going to pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, wonderful day you've given us in these warm temperatures during the winter months. And Lord, we praise you for this and we thank you for this, this wonderful time of year, that the beauty of the Christmas season and in your son that uh, was born during this season, O oh Lord. And we praise thee for this and we thank thee for your salvation and the lamb that was slain from the beginning of the world. Lord, please use this lesson today that I'm getting ready to teach for your glory. Lord, if I teach it, it's just words, okay? Um, but Lord, if you're behind it, it's much more than that. It means that your Holy Spirit is working in people's lives. Lord Jesus, I praise thee and thank thee for your grace and your goodness. In your name, Jesus, amen. All righty. So let's read chapter Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. After this manner... Therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. All right, let's take a quick look at Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. Okay, uh, Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. And it came to pass that he was praying. So Jesus was praying here in a certain place. And when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that in, is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, there we go. So that's the two accounts. All right, now. So the last time I taught the Harmony of the Gospels, we finished the activity of prayer and what not to do, okay, what not to do, okay, and then what to do about prayer, okay. Now Jesus in verse 9 gives an example of how to pray, okay, so what not to do, what to, what to do, and then how to pray, okay. When Jesus states, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, now in Luke 11, 1, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, okay. So in Matthew, Jesus is instructing on how not to pray, how to pray, um, and then what to do in prayer, where Jesus also gives an example of how to pray to the Father. Now, in Luke, the disciples are watching Jesus pray. Jesus is praying. They're watching him pray and waiting on Jesus to finish praying. And then they desire to know how to pray to the Father as Jesus does, okay? Because they recognize Jesus has a special connection with the Father, all right? <clears throat> so first, Jesus is our great example in all things. He's our great example, okay? Jesus prayed all the time, and we see this throughout the Scripture. So let's look at his praying. So here we have Jesus praying in verse 1. He was praying before the disciples. Uh, also in Luke 3, verse 21, um, now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, okay? 
the heaven was open. So here is Jesus praying at the time of his baptism, okay? It is likely that many people were looking at Jesus and saw him praying since many people were there at the baptism, okay? Um, this is when the, the urge to prayer sort of hits you no matter where you at, and it hits you right in the heart. And so what you do is you pray. No matter where you at, you just stop and then you pray, okay? Not sure if this is what Jesus felt here, but it seems that he prayed at the moment of baptisms or seconds after, you know, he was hit in the heart and he prayed, okay? Um, so how it happened, we don't know exactly, but it is a perfect example for us when that moment hits you in the heart, you pray, okay? You stop and pray, all right? In Luke chapter five, verse 16, it states, after Jesus heals the leper, uh, and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed, okay? So for some odd reason, he withdrew himself from, the, from everyone and went to the wilderness and prayed. So Jesus tells us in Matthew 6, verse 6, to enter into that closet and shut the door where you're alone. So here Jesus is alone in the wilderness. He tells us to shut the door, be alone. So if you do not have a closet, find a place outside, find a private place that you can pour your heart out to your Father in heaven because that's what needs to be done, okay? You need to get alone and get in private, okay? Then if you feel like when you get done praying and you feel like that you don't get an answer yet, Luke 6 verse 12 states this, okay? And it came to pass in those days that Jesus, he, he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. So what I'm saying here, if you get up, you don't like feel like you got an answer, keep praying. Don't stop praying until you get comfort in your heart. So when your heart is burdened and you don't know what to say, just keep praying, okay? Continue to pray until the burden goes away, until you get comfort, okay? I've done that many times, many times. I waited for the burden to go away. Then you will know that there is an answer coming, okay? And guess what? If you feel like you didn't get an answer, even though the burden's been taken away, no is also an answer, okay? That means you continue down the same path you're on because God wants you on that path, all right? And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm on a path, which I don't know why I'm on it, but I'm going down that path. I'd love for God to change it, but guess what? This is the path he wants me on, all right? So there are many more examples of Jesus in prayer throughout the New Testament. The question I've got you is, if you are a praying Christian or a not a praying Christian, I would say if you're a praying Christian, study the subject so you can pray better. If you're not a praying Christian, I would say, Get on your knees and pray more. Study the subjects. So you can see where you're wrong at, okay? So pray. Jesus is our example. Study about Jesus uh, praying, okay? Prayer is one of our great duties as a Christian because guess what? Prayer goes places you can't as a Christian, all right? So do not neglect prayer. We see that Jesus prayed all the time. As Paul states, pray without ceasing. Okay, that's what we do, pray without ceasing. Now, I have heard uh, this before, and um, you might say, uh, Brother Renu, what do I pray for? How do I pray? What, what am I supposed to pray for? Sometimes I don't feel like I got anything to pray for. You should always have something to pray for. There's so much sin and wrong in this world. Our government's falling apart. Uh, Congress and, and uh, the Senate just askew, you know? State governments are doing what they want and declaring things they want, okay? And uh, horrific things like, uh, you know, like um, uh, just all types of putrid things that go on within these state governments now. Um, and I'm not going to mention to because I don't want to get into politics, and I'm not a man of politics. I'm a man of God's word. Pray for your government. You've always got something to pray for is what I'm trying to say. And no matter what it is, you've got something to pray for, okay? All right, so, um, so how, and you may ask the question, well, how do I pray to a holy God? You might feel very sinful as a Christian. And you're like, man, why does God want to listen to my prayer? Well, guess what? God tells you why. Because you're his child, and he's going to listen to your prayer. Didn't your father, your actually dad, listen to you as a child? Okay? And when you were wrong, what did he do? He disciplined you. But he still loved you. He cared for you. Okay? He fed you. He clothed you. Okay? Will God not, another question might be asked, will God not think my prayer is insignificant? My friend, no prayer is insignificant. Okay? even down to asking about your food, you know, even down to asking about the clothing, even down to asking about uh, issues you may be having, uh, you know, in your health, you know, 
Uh, nothing, nothing is too insignificant for God, okay? Always pray, okay? There's a lot to pray for. Folks, if you are a Christian, God is your father. That's the key thing. You remember when you were a child? You asked your daddy for all types of things, okay? Talk to your father, okay? That's what Jesus says. You get not because you ask not, all right? Okay? You can tell him anything you want just as a little child is talking to your earthly father. Same way, okay? Ask him anything. Tell him anything that's on your heart, okay? Don't let things bother you, okay? If your finger's hurting you, talk to him about your finger, okay? Talk to him. He wants to know that you love him and want to communicate with him. Jesus knows our personal difficulties, okay? He knew it. He lived here, okay? All right? Where even though his disciples had likely heard the Sermon on the Mount, they still hear ask Jesus to teach them how to pray. They'd already heard this subject before. They'd forgotten it, just like humans do. We forget, all right? So let's read and compare the, the, the prayers that Jesus stated here. <clears throat> Matthew 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, okay? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So Luke has almost the same wording and the very same meaning, okay? I would say it is the very same meaning. So Luke 11, verse 2, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. So once we are through um, the comparing here, we're going to break this prayer down verse by verse, okay? So in Matthew 6, 11, verse 13, it states, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. So these debts that uh, that's talked about here in Matthew, they're moral debts or sins, okay? It's what they are, they're sins, okay? Uh, verse 13, lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen, okay? So this sort of like a, this last portion of verse 13 is like a restate of the opening up front, all right? Okay, now in Luke 11, verses 3 through 4, uh, Luke says, give us, this, give us day by day, so he's asking day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, okay? Uh, also, so he actually uses the term sins here rather than debt. For if we also forgive everyone that's indebted to us, those people that are indebted to us, that have done wrong to us, they're indebted to us, okay? But we forgive them, okay? Anyway, up front, because... We know they don't understand, so they're indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, all right? So sin is a legal debt, folks. It's a legal debt. I'm going to probably harp on the subject here real quick. Sin is a legal debt to God because it's the breaking of the law of God. You must understand this. Sin is a legal debt to God, okay, because it's breaking of his law. Okay, that's what it is, okay? 1 John 3, verse 4 states, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, okay? For sin is the transgression of the law. Okay? You are born in sin, all right? So our debts are sins that must be confessed, and we also need to forgive others who do things against us, okay? Because they are indebted to us, okay? So we forgive them. Just want to make this as clear as possible and understood, all right? And now let's jump back to the prayer in the beginning of it. Now this prayer starts off praying, Our Father which art in heaven. So God is in heaven. He's in heaven, okay? There's no sin in heaven. God's glory is in heaven, okay? God's glory is perfect. We're imperfect, okay? Okay, so, so if you're a Christian, God is your heavenly Father, okay? And you speak to him as your Father, okay? All peoples belong to God because he's their creator, but not all peoples have a father in heaven, okay? Only if you're a Christian do you have a father in heaven. Now, the prayer states, hallowed be thy name. So God's name should always, always, always be praised. It should always, always, always be revered and respected, okay? Um, held in the highest honor in all, God's name, okay? And it, it really burns you in the heart, pricks you in the heart when you hear people today use God's name in vain. It really, really pricks you in the heart, okay? Next, Jesus states, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Luke states, as in heaven, so in earth. So God's kingdom 
has come in the heart of every Christian, okay, that knows him, all right? Every Christian attempts to follow the will of God, all right? That's what we do, okay? But it's the but is the will of God done on the earth by the people of the earth? Is the will of God done on the earth by the people of the earth? The people of the earth follow their own way. They're not interested in God's will. They follow their own way, okay? Going off at the itching of their own ears, hearing but never hearing, okay? Hearing but never hearing, all right? Seeing but never seeing, never truly seeing, okay? They're blinded. The people of the earth cannot stop God's will from being done in the earth. They can't stop it. It's going to happen, okay? God's will is always done in heaven, okay? So it's always done in heaven, okay? It always happens up there, okay? It will always, it will always, always, always be accomplished on this earth. God's will will always be accomplished, okay? All right? Now that Jesus has taught us how to honor and glorify God, the Father in prayer, he now shows us how to ask the Father for our needs, okay? I mean, these are pretty simple needs, okay? All right? Paul stated in Philippians 4, 6, he states this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, okay? So don't, don't worry about the things of this world, but take them all to God in prayer, okay? And you come forth... With, with supplication of thanksgiving, thanking him for what he's done for you, thanking him for what he's given you, thanking him for your life, thanking him for your health, thanking him for just waking up in the morning, thanking him for another beautiful day, thanking him for all the beauty of his world that he's created, all right? So let your request be made known to God. So we are to come as a little child and ask God for our needs. Because guess what? As this earlier verse says in Matthew, for he knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. He already knows your need. He wants you to talk to him. Just like your, your earthly father knew what your needs were and you would come and talk to him about your, your desires as a child, all right? It's pretty simple stuff, all right? So you go before the father and you ask him, all right? Matthew 6, verse 11 and Luke 11, verse 3, they talk of our daily needs for sustenance, okay? Give, uh, so <clears throat> Matthew 6, verse 11 states, give us this day our daily bread, okay? You should always pray that. You know, I should pray that for every meal, you know. Thank him for these days, okay? Because he could cut things off right now and you wouldn't have any daily bread, all right? And give us day by day our daily bread, okay? We should pray day by day for our daily bread. We also pray that he would protect us and extend us and, and, and give us a good life here on earth and day by day, okay? All right, we need to pray. Pray to him, okay? Most people don't recognize or even understand or probably do not even care about the daily providence that God gives us, the daily sunshine, okay, the daily rain that, that nourishes the plants and the roots of the plants, okay, so that God gives to all the earth because it falls on the just and the unjust. Every single day it happens, okay? Each day is made new, okay? It makes a brand new day each day, okay? That's the wonder of it. The sun shines. It provides nutrients to plants to grow, sunlight for our bodies, you know, vitamin E, Warmth for all of our inhabitants here on the earth. You know, warmth, you know, we need warmth, okay? Uh, people don't like it when it gets too cold. And rain comes on the earth, uh, waters the plants, provides nourishment for all humanity all over, okay? Wind uh, blows uh, things around the earth, pushes plants, pushes trees. It strengthens root systems, okay? It, it provides air for us to breathe, the air layer, Around the earth is very tenuous, okay? It's held here by gravity. It's very thin when compared to the vastness of space. We don't have a lot of air to breathe, but it's here, you know, and it's always there. If it wasn't blown around, it'd become very stagnant and stale, okay? Uh, God, God knows how to take care of us, okay? All things on the earth need this oxygen and, and, to, and good air to live and breathe with. So we, we pray for the daily providence of God. We pray for it because we need it, okay, as human beings. Colossians verse 1, verse 17 states that he, Jesus, is before all things, and by him, Jesus, all things consist. So by him, all things consist. He makes things happen for us, okay? You need to praise him for that. So all things continue. All things are held together by the express power of Christ Jesus, okay? And that's just the way it is, okay? Now, next, Jesus shows us that we are to look at ourselves internally, who we are, okay, as a person, okay? 
thank, thank the Lord for our outward things, you know, and ask him to continue to provision us. And then and look in, internally at ourselves, okay? Our personal sins. And and then and our, our, you know, if we have some type of retribution activity going inside towards someone else who's, in, you know, sinned against us, you know, we are to forgive them, okay? So forgiveness to others, okay? Luke 6, 12 I mean, uh, Matthew 6, 12 and Luke 11, verse 4 states this, okay? They state the subject of asking forgiveness for your sin debt. Now, I've covered the subject of the debt of sin a little bit, so I'm not going to get too deep into it. The price for the debt of sin must be paid. It must be paid, okay? Jesus states, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Luke states, forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us, okay? This is a serious, serious subject, folks. <laughs> we need to recognize our sinful nature and see the debt of sin that we bore as Christians, okay? See that debt of sin, okay? The debt of sin that we bore before we came to know Christ. We also that must help us see the debt of sin that lost souls carry on their backs. We also need to be forgiving of others because looking at that lost sin that others carry on their backs, okay, um, forgiving of others, okay, for the basic reason that we are told to, one, and for the other reason, um, it is the basic fact that we are human beings with a sin nature that are prone to error and mistake, okay? Lost people don't know any better, okay? So you need to forgive them, okay? Forgive them. And by forgiving them, maybe they'll come to know Jesus Christ and see Jesus Christ in you, all right? I believe that you cannot really see your sin nature until you come to know Jesus Christ. And the light of the gospel shines into your heart and then you can really see your sin nature, okay? How putrid you are, all right? After you come to know Jesus Christ, you begin to see your sin nature, which seems to make you more thankful for Christ's work on the cross. You, you praise him more, you thank him more, it humbles you even more and more and more, the fact that he came down to earth to do this, all right? You are thankful for his mercy. You're thankful for his patience with you. You're thankful for his forgiveness of your sins, okay? So when someone mistreats, abuses, or spitefully uses you, that person is now indebted to you for that sin they sinned against you, all right? As a Christian, you have patience with that person and you forgive them, okay? It's what you do. You forgive them, all right? Just like Christ has forgiven you because we are indebted to God for our sins. Okay, now Matthew 6 verse 13 states this, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, okay? Luke 11, verse 4 states the very same thing. Use the same words. As a Christian, when you first prayed that, uh, that prayer to Christ, the guilt of your sin uh, would be removed by Christ, okay? Your sin debt was removed by a shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, okay? That's what it is. He paid the price uh, for all of our sins. We've got to come and ask for forgiveness, all right? And then he saves us. Now we ask for forgiveness uh, when we stumble and fall as Christians, okay? Uh, where we ask that uh, we never return to our folly again, okay? Uh, that we never return to that sin. We never return to the foolishness of our previous state again, okay? Because he's made us anew. That we are able to stand against the temptation in front of us through the power of God's armor, putting it on his armor, okay? The breastplate of salvation, Okay, the shield of faith, okay? All right, so putting on the, the gospel of peace, you know, be shod with the gospel of feet, peace. Um, so so you, you put on God's armor, uh, which the book of Ephesians talks about, where Paul states to stand there for putting on the whole armor of God. So the book of Ephesians, I think chapter six. Um, so God does not lead us into temptation, okay? God gives us the strength to overcome temptation. All right, this is what's going on here. James 1, 13, uh, chapter 1, verse uh, 13 through 16 states this. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Okay, don't, don't do that. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay, then when lust hath conceived, it bring forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bring forth death. Don't err, my beloved brother, okay? James is pretty clear on the subject. So clearly, God does not lead you into temptation. God can help you stay away 
from that temptation. It can help you stay strong against that temptation of this world. And if, if you stumble and fall, you repent and God will help you overcome that temptation. Okay, see, Dr. McGee stated that you should pray, leave us not in temptation. Okay, and that's what's going on here. All right, see, it does not mean to keep us out of temptation because we're all drawn there of our own lusts, okay? So when we are stuck there, we need to pray for God's help to get out of it, okay? Get out of that temptation. That's what's going on. We need to be delivered from the evil one who brings temptation our way, okay? Just like in the book of Job, when he goes up and asks God, can he do this to Job? Can he hurt Job, okay? The, the devil wants to destroy your testimony. That's what's going on here. He wants to destroy it, okay? So we need to ask for God to deliver us, okay? 1 Peter 5, verse 8 states, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour you, okay? So you are weak in God's word. If you are weak in God's word, if you are, and are, you're not wearing God's armor like you should, you now become prone to temptation, okay? The devil seeks that chance to get the chink in your armor out so that he can get in there and take you down. That's what he wants to do. That's what the devil wants to do, folks, all right? Matthew concludes this model prayer from Jesus. He says this, For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever, amen. So, folks, as Matthew Henry stated, he said, it is our duty to plead with God in prayer, to fill our mouth with arguments, not to move God, okay, but to affect ourselves, to encourage our faith, to stir our fervor, and to evidence both of those items. The best pleas in prayer are these pleas that are taken from God himself and from that which he has made known of himself to us, okay? We must wrestle with God in his own strength, not ours, all right? Thine is the kingdom. God gives, he saves, and he takes away like a king does here on the earth. Thine is the power. All things were created by the Son. All things consist by the Son to maintain and support the kingdom of God. Thine is the glory. All things, the end, the beginning, that which is given, that which is done for, that which is taken away, any activities are all for God's glory, and we need to accept that forever. This is eternally due to God and should always be our desire that all things are to God forever, okay, forever, okay? Then finally it says amen, okay? We, the Christian, need to say, it is so, Lord. This is true, okay? And we need to follow this. This is our desire, and this is our assurance of it, and this is the way we are. We follow your will, okay? Psalms 100, verses 4 through 5 states, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So go there, thanksgiving, praise him, okay? okay? And into his courts with praise. So thank him for your day, thank him for your morning, thank him for being alive, thank him for your health, and then praise him, glorify his name, okay? Thank him and praise him for everything he's done. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, okay? For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations, okay? So God's mercy and God's truth are unfailing throughout time. We can trust him, folks. Praise him for it. Be thankful unto him for it, okay? For what he's done for us. Now, now Jesus concludes his prayer with a statement, Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But, and this is a scary word when he says, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay? Don't make the mistake, folks, of not forgiving people. Okay? Don't do it. We are not to think of ourselves to be better than others. For all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Therefore, we all need the grace of God. The fact that God was willing to send his son to die for us, even when we were still his enemy, folks. Even when. 
He sent his son to us anyway because he knew we, he had no hope, okay? God knows, God knows, God knows, folks. He knows we got no hope without him, okay? He knows. So in turn, we are to have the same forgiving spirit to others that trespass against us, okay? Because the, the, the air might become very stiff between you and another person. The air might become like a cement wall eventually between you and a person. Then the, the air might become like a, a huge barrier with a gulf between, between the other person. Don't let it get to that, okay? Go ahead and tell that person you, you forgive them, okay? Um, and, and ask for their forgiveness, whatever you've done wrong, and then, and then let it be that way. And love them. Love them nonetheless, okay? And I, I have the same problem, folks. Same problem, okay? I, and I, I know there's a problem right now in my life. I've got to go confess to a person and, and love them, okay? Because I, I should not have... Um, I should have forgiven them a long time ago. So see how God's word works? It's the way it works, folks, okay? It convicts you, okay? And I didn't realize I got to do it. All right, love you, folks. We hope you have a great day. God bless you. And, and get ready for this new year. Make, make a resolution to study God's word. Make a resolution to pray every day. Uh, make a resolution, guess what, to uh, uh, reach out and to others, okay? Ask God to send a lost soul your way, okay, so you can bear fruit for heaven. Amen? All right, thank you this day. All right, bye-bye.